discussed on this program is often medical in nature and is used for informational purposes only. No content discussed should be taken as medical advice. Please consult your healthcare professional for any medical questions. Hi there, I'm Tori McGee and this is the Rapid Recovery Report sponsored by RomTech, the modern technology of rehabilitation. So we'll be doing a weekly series this uh, every Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, and we'll talk to different guests, be it, you know, surgeons or our own personal ROM star employees, as we like to call them, folks in the medical field, patients, and we'll talk to you and show you a little bit about uh, our product the Portable Connect, <laughs> uh, which is pretty darn cool. And, and we'll talk about it a little bit more. Uh, it's a high-tech recovery device that's geared uh, to get patients moving and recovering faster from injuries and surgeries. So if you wanted to learn a little bit more about that, you can check us out at the social handles listed in the description below. But today we have a really awesome guest. I'm going to bring him on and start the introductions here. This is Dr. Bogosian. He is an orthopedic surgeon and specializes in adult primary and revision joint replacement on the hip and the knee. Uh, I'm going to run through your credentials here, Dr. B, so just hang tight. <laughs> Uh, he completed his fellowship training at the world-renowned Cleveland Clinic, where he gained extensive experience in minimally invasive techniques to treat osteoarthritis of the hip and knee. He completed his residency at South Point Hospital, where he served as chief resident, and after obtaining his medical degree from Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine and his bachelor's from San Diego State University. He's a California guy at heart, I think. <laughs> so while at the Cleveland Clinic, uh, found foundation. He trained in utilizing minimally invasive techniques and hip and knee replacements, uh, such as direct anterior hip and subvastus approach to the knee. And he became proficient at computer navigation to reconstruct joints. So that's the kind of exciting thing that we're going to be talking about today. Um, you know, we gain, gaining valuable knowledge and experience in managing revision cases for patients who have complicated and failed uh, knee and hip replacements. And using that knowledge, Dr. Bogosian, uh, has kind of used his surgical skills in the arena of uh, robotic technology and teaches the application to fellow colleagues as well. So uh, we're really excited to be talking to you to get today, Dr. Bogosian. Wow, Tori, thank you for that. That's a, a great <laughs> deep introduction. I, I certainly appreciate that. Appreciate the invite to be on your show today. I'm very excited about it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we're looking forward to, to talking some high tech stuff. I'm uh, I'm equally excited about it. It's been a long time ago, you and I have uh, chatted about this a little bit, and, and RomTech is no exception uh, to the rule. So I'm excited to uh, have that as a part of my armamentarium and taking care of our patients. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, just for the folks watching at home, if you guys have any questions that you would like for Dr. Bogosian to answer, go ahead and pop them in the comment section. And time willing, we'll, we'll get to them here when we're done with our series of regular questions. So, uh, all right, well, let's just get started. So you seem to believe in a pretty high standard of technology in your practice. So, I mean, whether that's prescribing the Portable Connect or using technology to execute your knee and hip surgeries. So what drove you to learn and practice robotics in your work? Uh, great question. Um, I, you know, I think it's all about being a better version of yourself. And, you know, we, we kind of grow up thinking that we're going to do something in life and you get to that stage in life and you become a doctor and then all of a sudden you become a surgeon and then you become an orthopedic surgeon and you specialize in hip and knee replacement. It's like one step after another. And once you've been doing hip and knee replacements for some, some years, you start to think, well, has this changed much in the last 40 years? Are they doing yeah. things any different? And fortunately, the industry has um, really evolved and changed in the last five to 10 years. Robotics has, has really changed the nature of orthopedic surgery and how we do hip and knee replacements which really lends to the longevity and the accuracy and the minimally invasiveness of the operation. So um, for me, it's, it's adopting technology to help me become better than I was yesterday. I love that. I love that. I feel like that's something that can be applied in any aspect of life, but especially sure. in the medical capacity for sure. Absolutely. So um, tell me what exactly is entailed in the use of robot assisted surgery technologies. Can you describe the process for us? Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I just understand that if you're going to have to understand surgery is because you have to have the baseline as to what's changed, what's different. Mm -hmm. And if you think about, say, a knee replacement, because I think it's easier to describe. Someone has knee osteoarthritis and they have a disease in their knee that's causing them to have bone on bone disease and inflammation and pain and swelling and fluid. The joint. Dr. Bogosian, I think you cut off there after talking about fluid in the, in the knee. So we'll wait a second to see if uh, maybe your internet catches back up with us. Um, How are we doing? Oh, I hear you. I hear you and I see you. <laughs> How about now? Uh, you're you're freezing up, up a little bit, Ooh. but I think I can hear you pretty clear. Speaking of technology. <laughs> I know, right? Gosh, that's Why what happens when we do this. Why can't I get a good Wi-Fi these... signal around here? What's going on? <laughs> Jesus. Well, how are we doing now? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you okay now. All right. Well, I'm back on Verizon. I just got off of Wi-Fi. So thank you for that, Verizon. Okay. <laughs> uh, LTE. So um, in order to better understand robotic surgery, I think it's important to understand non-robotic surgery and the traditional way of doing surgery. So when we think of someone who has arthritis of the knee, they effectively have a loss of cartilage uh, on the ends of their thigh bone and the top of their shin bone, and therefore they have bone and bone disease. So so really the objective of the orthopedic surgeon is to remove that arthritis by shaving away or cutting away the ends of the thigh bone and the top of the shin bone that make up the knee. And of course you need to replace that with something. So traditionally what we do is we replace that with metal and plastic and therefore it's a knee replacement. Sure. I happen to have a little model to show you. So this he is- brought props. <laughs> I brought a prop. How do you like that? You know? I love it. So this is, this is a knee replacement. And this is, as you can see here, a femur up top. Uh, a tibia below and then a piece of plastic in the middle and what the objective of the orthopedic surgeon is is to is to cut away the ends of the thigh bone and the top mm -hmm. of the shin bone so that we have these perfect cuts on the end of the bone and we do that with a saw and traditionally what we've done is we make all of our measurements and we pin guides onto the bone with pins and slotted guides through which I lost your audio. Oh my, yeah, I had no, a call, good. I just declined, okay, good. <laughs> so um, really what we wanna do is we wanna make these cuts and we wanna make these cuts as perfectly as possible. And, and in the past, what we've done is we've pinned guides and we've made those cuts through the guides. And frankly, the placement of those guides can provide one source of error. And of course, the use manual use of a handheld saw can mm -hmm. be the other source of, of error. And any imperfections in that process can lead to a short-term knee replacement that may fail in three, five, six years, or even sooner. And our objective is to perform the operation so perfectly with such accuracy that the knee replacement lasts 25, 30, 35 years. So enter robotics. And right. what we do in robotic surgery is we obtain a CAT scan of the patient's knee prior to surgery. We obtain the overall alignment of the leg because we can change and fix the alignment. Some people are bow-legged and some people are not knee, and we can fix that. Sure. And so once we have that overall alignment, we have a CAT scan of the patient's knee, and we can build a three-dimensional model of that patient's knee. And once we have a 3D model, now you put it in the computer, mm -hmm. and you can remove the arthritis and make all your cuts on the computer. It's almost like CAD software, or architectural wow. drafting software, right? Yeah. And you can left click and you can rotate the femur and rotate the tibia and you can flip it upside down and you could see if there's any metal overhanging the back of the tibia. You could see exactly if your components are fitting perfectly to contour the patient's anatomy. You could change the position, the angle of the patient's knee. Remember, we're not even in the operating room yet. Yeah. This is, this is computer work still. So once we have all that information and I've come to the conclusion that, okay, I've put this patient's knee replacement in perfectly. I've done it with the robot, with the 3D software. Now I can enter the operating room. I expose the knee and now I bring in the saw and the mm -hmm. robot and I register the patient's knee to the robot. There's a series of registration and verification, which takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Sure. And w once I do that, the robot knows exactly where this patient's anatomy is at all time during the operation. There's a saw attached to the robotic arm of the robot. Mm -hmm. And once I click the trigger on that saw, the saw comes in and angles itself to the perfect angle, pitch, and direction 
to which make to which I want that cut made based on the plan that I dedicated previously. That's so all I do as a surgeon is I do the surgical exposure. I open up the knee so that the robot can get in. Mm -hmm. And then I click the trigger. And once I'm holding the trigger, the robot sets the direction, the angle, the depth of cut, and the pitch of the blade. Holy cow. Amazing. I mean, That's if you, incredible. There, there's some videos on the website, on my website, that show exactly how these things work. And it's it's pretty amazing. And people come in the operating room and learn this stuff all the time. And mm -hmm. and and when they see this kind of happen, it's it's always an eye-opening experience because it's, yeah. it's pretty cool to see the robot just put that saw in the exact spot. Yeah, it's like autopilot. <laughs> it becomes autopilot. It really does. And and it and it highlights the accuracy of the robot when you take the patient's leg and you move the patient's leg a, a half a centimeter and you see the robotic arm and the robotic saw move literally simultaneously as oh the robot gosh. as the robot adjusts to the position of the leg there's no there's no delay there's no lag time it's happening instantaneously so what that allows us to do is that allows us to make these cuts absolutely perfectly yeah. and by doing that you improve the longevity of the implant you improve the accuracy of the placement of the implant so there's no overhang there's no metal touching you know skin and there's no, i mean uh, tendons and so on and then you also improve the ability to do the operation in a less invasive way. That's amazing. We're to probably going to gonna talk about minimally invasiveness with how it how it uh, relates to robots here in a second. So yeah, yeah. I'll See, leave that for later. It's like you know what I'm going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll we'll come into that then in in a little bit. And I mean, you kind of already answered this, but I mean, is robotic surgery better than traditional surgery in your opinion for for knees and then for other I guess surgeries as, as well? Yeah, I mean, I absolutely think it is. If I was having a knee replacement or a hip replacement today, yeah, I would want it done robotically because it improves the accuracy, minimally invasiveness, you know, the recovery process and the longevity of the implant. So we've come a long way. If you think about the last 40 years or 50 years that, you know, uh, hip replacements have been and knee replacements have been performed. And I think that the incremental incremental changes that have happened decade over decade have been rather minimal, some nice improvements primarily particularly uh, prim uh, particularly to the implants themselves mm -hmm. but never before have we seen such an acceleration in the technology of how to place these components which is where yeah. robotics came in that's amazing I feel like uh, I mean I, I'm in I'm in your boat now you sold me on robotics <laughs> completely sold done if I, ever I, I, I need a surgery need a replacement or hip replacement anytime <laughs> soon though you look too young for that <laughs> if ever I need a surgery I'm always gonna ask is there that's a robotic fair. option because that's what I want that's fair. Uh, so how long have you been in, like, were you in practice before utilizing robotics? So I started my practice in 2010 okay. and right out of the gate in 2010, robotic knee replacement surgery was available for the purpose of doing partial knee replacements only. Interesting. Uh, it, yeah. It wasn't until uh, later that Stryker bought the company, the company being called Mako. Mm -hmm. uh, Stryker bought Mako uh, sometime later and then they developed the total knee and total hip platform. So that's been around for... Uh, I have to say about three or four, no, probably four to five years and uh, significantly adopted with regards to its use in the last two to three years. And I've been using it now for about uh, three years. And I'm sure there's just, I mean, a night and day difference in traditional versus robotic surgery. And, and there is. does it make it a faster process? Like are, no. are patients on the operating table less time? No. Okay. Okay. No, it's actually a little bit longer. Okay. Um, because there's a registration process where you have to tell the the robot where the patient's anatomy is. Sure. And frankly, that takes a few extra minutes, you know, but we're talking single digit minutes to 10 to 12 minutes. We're not talking an extra hour. Got it. Okay. So I know you bring up a good point because most patients think that an ear replacement takes three, four hours. Well, it doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, an ear, a standard ear replacement without robotics could take me about 35, 45 minutes. Um, and in a robotic knee replacement maybe takes 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. Um, but keep in mind that I'm not trying to brag, but that's all I do, right? So I'm a two trick yeah. pony. All I do is knee replacements and hip replacements. So um, we, we at Eisenhower have fine tuned the system so that we have the same surgical techs. We have the same anesthesi anesthesiology team. We have the same, in my case, physician assistants. We have the same process. It's being repeated over and over and over and over and over again. So if you think about the model of efficiency and you take, for example, Tesla and, you know, they're, they're building cars left and right, they're not reinventing the wheel every time, right? New patient right. comes in, you do it the same way you always do it. 
my surgical tech knows exactly what instrument I needs next, I need next, and they put it in my hand. I'm not looking back asking for no, no, sure. I want that one on the back table. So, so the the process is extremely efficient. Now there are places. Yeah you know, where it might take them two hours or three hours to do a knee replacement. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but we've, we've fine tuned that process so much that it's, it's about an, an hour or under an hour per, per operation. Wow. That's amazing. I mean, you could just assembly line them, put them up and knock them down. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's bad to think about it that way because, you know, you don't want to think of your patients as Tesla cars, right? That's not our right. goal, you know, but, but, you know, but at the same time, the being able to help, yeah, yeah. And help as many people as quickly as possible, because if and you need a knee is, replacement, you don't want to be putting it off and living with issues and pain, you know, that's the key. The key is trying to help as many people as you can. Yeah, absolutely. And, so, and doing it and doing it well so that these implants last a long time and they're not coming back two, three years later with, with a need that doesn't work anymore. Right. Yeah, absolutely. What a difference. What a difference, I'm sure. Um, so as a surgeon who's fully embraced technology, uh, in your opinion, has prescribing the Portable Connect complemented your use of robot-assisted surgeries? And how, if so? <laughs> yeah, so I adopted uh, Portable Connect fairly soon after robotic surgery became a standard in my practice. Okay. So the two kind of go hand in hand, right? And I'll tell you, before robotics and before uh portable connect patients <laughs> patients would come into the office and they'd say oh dr bogosian your miracle worker my new replacement's working beautifully you know the recovery was great yada 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 and now i don't hear that very often here's what i hear i couldn't have done it without the bike <laughs> <laughs> well i'm sorry to steal your thunder there <laughs> <laughs> it's okay it's okay you know what it's okay if the patients are coming in and they're doing great that's all i care about right right but literally they come in and the two comments I hear are either about how great robotic surgery was and led to their rapid recovery, which I'm sure it did, right. or how great the Portable Connect was and how quickly it, it led to their rapid recovery. Frankly, I don't care, right? As long as the <laughs> patients are doing well, that's all that matters. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, just know that you are well loved and it's not just because of the portable connect. I'm sure they, they, tell, they really do. They tell me that all the time. It was, um, it was just yesterday I had a patient and his wife. Uh, I did a knee, I did a hip replacement on him about a month ago and I did a hip replacement on his wife and I think it was August mm -hmm. and uh, they may actually be watching this because I told them about this webinar yesterday. <laughs> so uh, they, um, they, as they were walking out of my office, the wife stopped and she said, you, you need to understand that you've completely changed our lives. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I, that's great. I appreciate that. You know, what, how do you mean? And she said for about two, three, we were very active people and for about two, three years, Prior to my hip replacement and his hip replacement, we haven't walked, we haven't hiked, we haven't played tennis, we haven't played pickleball, we haven't, you know, we haven't done much. Our grandkids haven't seen us because when we do go to see them, it hurts so bad to, you know, physically play with them that we oh. tend to not go as often. So, you know, she said she and I could I could see her getting emotional. She didn't quite cry, but I could see like glassy eyes that I really had an effect on these people's lives. Yeah. And you just, you know, you can't, you, there's no reward in the world that can amount to that. It's, it's been yeah. pretty amazing. Oh, that makes my heart so happy to hear. <laughs> it so makes me happy to hear it all the time. Yeah. It's, it's pretty, pretty yeah. special. I love it, but stop talking about it because otherwise I'm going to get all. <laughs> all right. So what, uh, in your opinion, what role do you feel that robotic surgeries will play in the future? I think we're in the infancy of robotic surgery. I mean, if you think about where we've come in the last 10 years, it was partial knee replacements only and then total knee, total hip. Mm -hmm. um, right now, we do very little revision work with, with robot. Uh, but I think in the future to come, I have, a, I have a young boy who's five years old. I'll tell you, I, I, don't, think, I don't think conventional surgery is going to even be an option when he's uh, in my age or, or practicing if he chooses to go into orthopedic surgery. The, the technology is advancing pretty rapidly. And I think we're going to get to the point where not only does it improve accuracy, but it significantly uh, improves um, recovery, recovery and invasiveness. Yeah. Is there a surgery, I guess, in in your opinion now that would benefit from robotics that the technology is just not quite there yet? Yeah, revision surgery. In my field, it's uh, revision yeah. surgery. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, revision surgery where you and by that I mean for your viewers is it's when you're taking out a knee replacement that was put in you know 10 15 20 years ago or a hip replacement that was put in 20 years ago mm -hmm. uh, and it's failed for whatever reason or not and you know to be able to do it robotically and that and that's where I think you have the best 
opportunity to improve accuracy and, and placement because robotic surgery, it's one, I mean, uh, revision surgery, it's one of those situations where accuracy is the most important thing because you could do a revision operation, say a hip revision for someone. And although you intend for it to last another 20, 30 years, they never do. Mm. A revision operation for a hip is going to last half or a third as long as the original operation. So if you can improve the accuracy and the placement of those components, you can potentially improve the longevity, making it hopefully the last revision for that patient, not the first of three or the yeah, first of four. For sure. So talking then about, you know, recovery and I guess the longevity of, of knees after a revision or a replacement, how has the portable connect shaped patient recovery and what did recovery look like before? Yeah. So the, the, one of the most challenging things for patients to obtain in the early post-operative period, say particularly around the hip, uh, excuse me, knee replacement mm -hmm. is the, is the concept of co-contraction, right? So in co-contraction, you have your quads and your hamstrings. And when you're fresh out of surgery, everything wants to tighten up. They want to contract at the same time. And when they do, they're opposing each other and they're fighting each other. So the knee tightens up, the joint tightens up, the pain increases, the swelling increases, the inflammation increases. And what would you or I do if we were lay people and both sides of our joints are tightening up and both sides of the muscles are tightening up? We freeze. Right. Right. You freeze, you sit down, you're like, oh my God, I'm not going to move it because it hurts to move it. Mm -hmm. Every time I move it, my, my quads fire, my hamstrings fire, and it hurts. Mm -hmm. So that's the early phase of recovery. And patients really struggle with that. The for, traditionally, the first two weeks of a knee replacement are the most miserable. I tell my patients, it's not yeah. a cakewalk. Be prepared. It's going to hurt like hell for two weeks. And after two weeks, it gets a lot better. Mm -hmm. And I found that patients who have the portable connect, because it allows them that passive range of motion, they basically get on the bike and the bike is doing all the work for them. Mm -hmm. The muscles are relaxed. And so they're moving. And as they're moving their knee and they're moving their joints and they're, and they're, and they're circulating the, the blood in their vessels and so on, they start to realize, okay, I don't, I don't need to be so tight. I don't need to stiffen up. Let the machine do the work for me. And I'm talking, you know, six hours after they get home from an operation. I'm not talking yeah. about four days later because by it's four amazing. days later, they're doing passive assisted. So it's passive, passive assisted, and then active. Mm -hmm. And those are the three ranges of motion that the, that the ROM tech uh, provides them. So in that early phase, you just put your feet on the pedal and the pedal is doing all the work for you. And when it's doing the work for you, you're moving that joint. And by moving that joint, you're stretching and, and relaxing those muscles and they're, you're allowing them to return back to their normal state. Yeah. Thing, things that I wish my Peloton would do and keep me in shape. Yes, <laughs> That'd right. be nice. <laughs> right. Do it for you. <laughs> Uh, if only, maybe one day we'll get to right. robotics for me to be in really good shape. But as maybe, for now, what maybe Romtech should buy Peloton and see if uh, <laughs> see if they can come up with something. I wish that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you know, we it, it's funny in the comments section we've got absolute game changer, and it's it's true. I mean, robotics and the portable connect, especially yep. in tandem, are game changers in yeah. in the realm of you know lower extremities and especially knees. So. I have one last thing here. I know we heard sure. that there was some big news coming out of Eisenhower this June. Yeah. So can you expand on that a little bit yeah, so our audience knows been what's a up? a long time in the making. <laughs> oh, my God. So Eisenhower Medical Center in Rancho Mirage um, is a wonderful hospital, top-notch, one of the, one of the California's uh, best hospitals. And they are and have been for the last two and a half years or so building a huge expansion on the orthopedic program. So we mm. took our little Desert Orthopedic Center office and we've expanded it both in the north and south directions and built this, I think the, I think it was like 70 or $80 million expansion. Wow. Thanks to our donors, by the way, we have many, many donors that helped to make it a reality. And uh, talk about state of the art and talk about technology. I mean, this thing is just incredible. The amount of technology in those operating rooms just supersedes anything. And I've traveled, you know, Cleveland Clinic, Mayo Clinic, Hospital for Special Surgery. I've seen in one fashion or another some of these huge institutions that have all the money at their fingertips and mm -hmm. all the technology at their fingertips and eisenhower's purpose when developing this they wanted to future proof this or future proof it as long as they can and they did exactly that i mean the amount of technology in those operating rooms are just mind-blowing and i'm well, so excited exciting. i think come june yeah come june it opens up and we can start operating there and and uh it's a very exciting time well, that's fabulous. Maybe one day we'll be able to do an on location one That'd of these great. and you can give yeah. us a tour. It'd be so much fun. That'd be great. I'd, I'd love, love to take a trip down to Southern California and see ya. We'd love to have you. <laughs> Perfect. Anytime. 
Actually, no, not anytime. Don't come in August. No, no okay. Not that's fine. Palm Springs. No, don't come in August. <laughs> Chances are I may not be here much. Fair enough. That's fair. <laughs> right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Bogosian, for taking your time and, and chatting with us. Thanks for bringing props. That actually really helped Absolutely. somebody who's never been in the operating room myself to kind of see what it is that you do. So we appreciate it. Absolutely. Tori, thank you for the invitation. I appreciate it. It's been a wonderful experience. Of course. And thank you to everybody who is watching, commenting. Uh, feel free to share it with your folks, uh, you know, and, and reach out to Dr. Bogosian if you're looking for a knee or hip replacement in the California area. He's your guy. Uh, feel free to check us out at www.romtech.com. Follow and subscribe to our socials so that you can be up to date on all of the exciting things that we've got going on. Remember, we do one of these every week. Thanks so much, you guys, for hanging out with us, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.